With Christmas right around the corner, I figured today we'll do some Christmas sketches and talk a little bit about our art journeys, past, present, and future. <laughs> Greetings everyone, welcome to the underground lair where we bring our creations to life. I'm Scott with CircWorks Art Labs. I'm a professional illustrator, designer, and mad creator because you know what? You have to be a little crazy to do this thing called art. And you know what else is crazy? The holiday season. It, get, it does get a little crazy, a little hectic. So to ease on some of that stuff, I just figured that this video, I, I just do a fun video and, uh, and do some Christmas sketch cards. Uh, this is something I've done in the past. Uh, one of my favorite things to do around Christmas is watch Christmas specials. A lot of stuff that I grew up with as a kid. One of my favorites, or a, a series of favorites of mine, are the Rankin and Bass series. I've done some of these before. Uh, you know, here's Jack Frost. This is the Burger Meister Meister Burger. Of course, one of my favorites, the Bramble Abominable, Abominable Snowman, and uh, Mr. Heat Miser, Mr. Is it Mr. Cold Miser or Mr. Snow Miser? I don't remember, but the two Miser brothers. Um, all these guys, I've done these before. Um, but another one of my favorite all time children shows, like, I think this is more of a family show. I don't think it's just specifically aimed towards children and obviously these other ones probably aren't either because I still love watching them but is the Muppets Christmas Carol with Michael Caine and of course the Muppets and everything uh, so I figured uh, it would be fun to do some characters from that one of the things that I really like that, about that um, particular adaptation are the ghosts the ghost of Christmas uh, p past present and Christmas is yet to come. I really like the way they did it. They didn't necessarily go with just this, just some existing Muppet characters. They created new ones and so I figured I'd do each one of those and while I do that I want to talk a little bit about my own artistic journey past, present, and yet to come. Um, talk a little bit about the, that adaptation itself and I want to get feedback from you guys about your artistic journeys. What's, what, what's kind of What's the trajectory there? Let me know in the comments section. So I wanted to get started with that, uh, do a few sketch cards. The only other thing I wanted to mention was if you are watching this the day that it comes out, uh, usually these come out on a Tuesday. Tomorrow on Wednesday, if you are local to Arizona, I'll be doing a signing, doing more sketch cards and sketch covers and remarks and things. I'm going to be doing that at Surprise Comics. So if you happen to be in the Arizona area, if you want to make your way down to Surprise, go to Surprise Comics. I'll be doing that Wednesday. That's the new comic book day. Uh, and it's just a good chance to get some sketches or something like that that you might want to give as gifts for Christmas because they make great gifts and I like doing sketches. So I'm going to do some more right now. Let's get started. Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol has been adapted so many times, but I think this Muppet Christmas Carol is probably my favorite. Uh, I just watched another sort of adaptation. It was called The Man Who Had Been a Christmas. It was, about, it was kind of a story about, about Charles Dickens and how he came, how he wrote the story. And then Scrooge and the other characters kind of came in and they, they kind of helped inform him, uh, form the story for him and everything. And I thought that was kind of cool. And then I thought to myself, you know, I really need to revisit A Muppet Christmas Carol. So I did, and I've got Disney Plus, and so all, that's the one thing that's great is that all of those, you know, the Muppet movie, all of those classic, uh, all the Muppet Show episodes are up there. So, uh, so yeah, I turned it on, checked it out, and uh, did not disappoint. Uh, it's it's always a great rewatch, and I just really like the way that they did that. And it's obviously it's such a great story. I mean, one of the most famous stories of all time, and one of the most celebrated stories of all time, and for good reason. I mean, I just think that, uh, especially with this. Scene, season uh you know whether you know we're not all like scrooge but i think i think when we get to the towards the end of the year we can start reflecting especially around the holidays and think of things that yeah maybe we can do better or improve about ourselves so that's sort of what i'm trying to <laughs> what i'm thinking about as i'm watching this as i'm doing these drawings and everything and something i'll talk more about in yet to come but as far as this adaptation like i mentioned in the intro one thing i really like is that they you know they didn't decide to do like for the ghost of christmas past to use like miss piggy or janice or something or some existing muppet character they created all new muppets and i think i think that really helps the story out because for one thing it 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 adds and the way michael kane played the character of scrooge is totally you know straight and everything like that it wasn't in a lot of other adaptation or a lot of other Muppet movies, the the 
the human characters that are in on the joke. And really, he's one of the few human characters in this, and none of the human characters are really in on the joke. They're, they play it serious while, while the Muppets kind of, um, you know, do their thing and there's jokes between, you know, Gonzo as Charles Dickens and Rizzo the Rat and all that stuff. So really, really do like that adaptation. As far as the, the, the we're talking about the past, one of the things I want to talk about, my past, as far as my artistic journey, I've had these stages, but my past, I look back as kind of a whole different place from where I was. There was a time when I was starting off and I was doing client work and that's pretty much what I like to do. Either client work or I work for other companies, you know, in the game design space or children's entertainment or whatever. And it was all great and it all informed what I do now. But one of the things that, um, that I look back at that period of my past as an artist is it was all like, I kind of had this attitude like, you know, I, I will, you commission me to do work or you pay me to do work and, and I will do it. And I was like, I never really, that's why I mostly focus on client work and everything. And I never really gave two thoughts about, okay, I'm just going to create some things and then sell them. That's, you know, to me, that was like, that's the fine artist mentality. I'm a, I'm a commercial artist or I'm, you know, so, you know, you, you I, I'll I, I'll accept money and I'll do I'll do whatever whether it's a logo design or whatever and that was kind of the way way I I operated my business and I guess you know I guess it worked great and at that time that was that was you know what I was thinking and that was that was that was good at that point and and I don't regret really anything that I did along that way but that was sort of my attitude and and as you'll see as we sort of as we sort of shift into the present and then the future, how that sort of changed. And, you know, it's not a bad thing. It's not a good thing. It's just different points in our life. And that's why I always refer to this as the artistic journey, because if you're an artist, whether you're a professional artist or you do it as a hobby or whatever, you just love art, you're going to find that along the way things change and you, you either get better or well, you, you should be getting better um, if you are continuing to practice and everything. But your ideas and your attitudes sort of change as far as the type of work you like to do um, and, and all of that stuff. So, so it was very much for me, my past, the way I look at my art journey, artistic journey in the past was that I was sort of a hired gun, you know, you hire me and then I'll do the artwork. So now we're getting into a little more of the present and this is probably one of my favorite, uh, I don't know, I just love this, he, this character that they developed for the Muppet Christmas character, 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 <laughs> Carol is, um, man, I really tripped up on that. But uh, as far as Muppet Christmas Carol, this character for the Ghost of Christmas Present, I really like their, and it, it's, I mean, most of these are based on the text, you know, what, how it, they were described in the text and everything. Um, but to see them as a Muppet and, and just this big lumbering guy who, you know, starts off huge in this, in this how you can, he can barely even fit in the house and then gradually as time goes on he withers starts withering away and uh, with the present soon to be the past um, he starts to get gray and everything and I and uh, but the way they handled that as a Muppet and the, the, the I forgot who voiced it but it was very familiar voice you've heard heard that that voice I don't want to say voiceover actor because the Muppeteers do the they it's not like a voice and then another person does the puppeteering it's all the same person but um, very recognizable, even though I can't, I can't picture which, which one of the Muppet performers it is. But anyway, regardless, um, really like that interpretation of this character. Um, just fun to see him on screen and everything. Um, and his inter interaction with Scrooge, because at this point in the story, Scrooge is sort of starting to sort of see the light. And, and you can see his transition start to, start to unfold. Um, and speaking of trans transitions, so for me, presently... Uh, I talked about, you know, the past that being that kind of hired gun and, you know, this past couple couple years have been a little difficult, obviously, with everything going on with the pandemic and everything. And during that time, uh, and I think I was leading, I was definitely leading up to this, but rather than just being a hired gun, I decided, you know what, what I want to do now and with lockdown and everything, I think I've got a chance to... You know, people aren't necessarily hiring or looking for artists as much. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take this opportunity to start doing the things I want to do. 
not, and these are things that I'm not getting paid for, you know, developing stuff on my own, whether it's, you know, I've been doing, publishing a lot of books. Um, I was doing t-shirt designs for a while. Um, but basically creating things that I wasn't being commissioned to do just because I wanted to do them. And because of that, and, and, and basically build passive income streams based on that stuff. So I'll create something and then I'll put it out there. And it could also be my digital products that I develop for making comics or whatever. Um, you know, putting some time into those, time that no one commissioned me to do. I mean, it was all just, you know, I'm gonna spend this, <laughs> in the case of the digital products, quite a lot of time that I don't get paid for and I don't know if this is gonna be successful or not. And it takes time and it's still, I'm still working at this model, but, but, I really, I'm really enjoying where I am right now as far as this idea of developing products and, and projects and things for myself and then that will, you know, go on after, you know, after they're finished. Uh, I mean, these digital products, I mean, they take a long time to create, but they do still bring in money now that they're finished. And that's the same thing with the coloring books, same thing with um, just a lot of things that I'm, that I'm doing right now. So. So I've sort of made that shift and uh, this is really where I want to be. So hopefully I can keep this trajectory going and continue to do this type of thing because although when I was doing client work, I did enjoy it. We all make jokes about, oh, bad clients and stuff like that. But I really do enjoy working with people and I still do that to a certain extent. I try to do find projects where I'm working with somebody, but that I could take that whatever I develop and have some ownership of that and turn around and, and do something else with that. So that's sort of where I am right now. And, um, and it's been going okay. I mean, it's still, it's still a bit of a struggle because it's not, you know, again, no one's paying me to do this stuff. I do it. And some of the stuff to be perfectly honest, just doesn't work. It's that people don't want it. Like out of all of the books and things I published, only a handful of those books, um, are successful but luckily I'm finding it's the ones that I put the most time into that have been the most successful the coloring books as opposed to just line journals with funny phrases on the covers and things like that and stuff like that so that's sort of where I am as far as the present um, so uh, looking to my artist journey yet to come and and of course this I think this like, like I've mentioned with some of these other characters, going back to the Muppets Christmas Carol, their interpretation of the Christmas yet to come, it's always very similar. It's the, the shrouded, you know, person, but, you know, it's a lot of times it's in shadow, but with this one, the puppeteering and everything with not just, oh, I can't really make out what's under that hood, but the absence of anything. You see, you see the void in his face and, or its face and, and it's just, it's very creepy and, and it's, you know, it's huge and I just really enjoy that. So it's, it's fun to kind of take that and, um, and go ahead and, and, and draw that, draw that sketch card of it and everything. Um, all of these character designs are great. I just, I, I'm, if you haven't been able to tell, I'm a huge fan of the Muppets. I've got a, right over my art desk, uh, I've got a picture of, um, of Jim Henson that uh, I, a friend of mine did. And uh, it's just one of the <laughs> best gifts I've ever got. It's just amazing. Um, and I look up every day for inspiration because uh, Jim Henson is one of my biggest inspirations. But um, anyway, as far as being inspired, what I'm inspired to do moving on uh, in the future or yet to come, one of the things that I, I'm really going to focus on in the coming year, and I'll talk more about this. I'll maybe do a year and wrap up or whatever, but I really want to start working more on reaching out and building community, whether that's doing more in-person get-togethers and drawings. I started doing that and then with the holidays, it kind of fell off a little bit, but I want to get back to doing that. And also just online, I want to create some sort of expanded community, you know, taking, you know, through my newsletter, through YouTube and, and hopefully get back to doing some more stuff on some other social media platforms because I kind of fell off on a lot of those other platforms where I'm just basically mostly concentrating on YouTube. So I do, that's something I want to do is, is build more community. Um, uh, and that could be, I'm not exactly sure what that's going to be, whether that's some sort of a discord, something around, you know, making comics one-on-one, um, getting a community of comic book creators together that, um, they can work together to create some cool things and, uh, 
and sort of yeah I don't know that's I mean I love I love the what I did with making comics 101 and I want to continue to do that I want to expand sort of what I'm doing to more live streams I want to expand the underground layer and uh, bring you guys into that a little more just some things I'm thinking about yet to come um, and also continue I really want to continue what I'm what I started doing this past couple years um, with you know the whole idea of building these passive income streams as opposed to doing you know client work hired gun type of stuff continue on doing that because I'm really you know I'm enjoying that and uh, that's the direction I want to go and and if I get to the point where I can build a community and build you know maybe build up this YouTube channel do some more interesting things that that um, that just uh, I don't know this capture capture that audience um, and then find a way not just to be not only a content creator but somebody who's you know helping other people with their content and and hopefully some sort of collaboration where there's just you know using whatever whatever I built here in the YouTube space to help other people get their projects off the ground or whatever just some things I'm thinking about and, uh, and yeah and so past present future those are some things that I'm talking about okay just a little recap this is my ghost of Christmas past my ghost of Christmas present and of course the ghost of Christmas yet to come these are fun sketch cards I, I like doing these and also a little recap about my personal artistic journey but I want to know about your artistic journey what what have you guys done before in the past what have you worked on just this past year and what are you thinking about doing next year in 2023 I want to know let me know in the comment section and I'll talk to you guys later happy holidays that is all. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Also, you can follow me at CircWorks on social media. And now you can support the work that I do on Patreon. If you like making comics, then go to CircWorks.com and pick up the Comic Maker Starter Kit. It's packed full of fonts, brushes, templates, and more. And best of all, it's totally free.